The technique takes the common herpes virus, which usually causes cold sores, and turns it into an anti-cancer treatment. The virus has been genetically modified in the laboratory and two specific genes have been removed from the virus. The first gene is necessary for the virus to cause disease in normal cells. By taking it out, the virus is able to grow in cancer cells but not in normal cells. The second gene that's been removed is a gene that the virus normally uses to, to cloak it from the immune system. So by taking that away, we make the virus visible to the immune system. So it's not just doing damage to the cancer cells, it's actually triggering an immune response. So long as you kill uh, some of the cancer cells in a way that makes those cells visible to the immune system, the immune system is powerful enough to hunt down the cancer cells throughout the rest of the patient's body. The modified virus is injected directly into the cancer cells, which makes it suitable for cancers like Michael's head and neck tumour. Patients on the trial received four of these injections over nine weeks, alongside courses of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And just open wide for me. Good, let me just put your chin up. When he started his treatment, Michael's tumor very quickly started to change. The third injection, Kevin's words, were that the tumour was melting away and had done so to such an extent that actually he had a little bit of trouble finding where the tumour was. In fact, Michael never received his planned fourth injection. After five years without any recurrence, he was declared officially cured of cancer. I think it sure sharpens your enthusiasm for life and, for me, made me, uh, my appetite for life even greater. And Michael isn't alone. Five years after receiving the therapy, an astonishing 70% of the patients in the head and neck cancer trial were still cancer-free and could be classed as cured. So Professor Harrington decided to turn his attention to melanoma, skin cancer. And the early results from this phase of the trial are equally exciting. In melanoma, in fact, this treatment has had its greatest effects, both in terms of the response of the tumour, duration of response, and in some subgroups, a really very impressive improvement in their ability to survive the disease. Kevin, if you were looking 10, 20 years into the future, what would you fantasise for this therapy? Well, my real dream for virotherapy is that we see a day where we use viruses right up front at the time patients are first diagnosed, and we use them as part of a combination strategy with other treatments, including perhaps radiation therapy, chemotherapy, surgery, to cure more patients the very first time they're diagnosed with cancer. So it could change the face of cancer therapy? Certainly, that's the, that's the plan and that's the desire. <laughs>